What is going on everybody? Today we're going to talk tortoise hibernation, we're going to wake our Herman's tortoise up and we're going to go through how I set her up inside the reptile shed. Okay, first of all, let's have a little look at her current setup. I've got a few more additions uh, to do to this. There currently is no heat lamp, so up here I'm going to uh, fit a new plug and we're going to drop a Arcadia D3 basking lamp down and we'll, we'll talk about the measuring of the temperatures and some bits like that. But that's pretty much all that's left on her inside enclosure. Her outside enclosure is yet to be done. I broke it all down a couple of weeks ago so I can clear all the land and make it a little bit better for her, make it bigger. We've done loads of sort of demolition work outside to make extra room for her. But because it's March, we're in the UK, the weather's awful. Um, I'm not going to be worrying about that anytime soon. So we've got to make this indoor enclosure as good as possible. Some of the key features of this enclosure is her, where's my finger, is her all day buffet. So this is a, we've got a prayer plant there. We've got a, um, a zebra plant there. These plants she can have, um, and what they're going to do is they're going to sort of grow over the edge. As they grow over, she can nibble on them. Um, so that's the first bit there. On this one, I've got some bits that she can eat as well. So we're growing cacti there. I've got, ooh, well, we've got their Boston fern, uh, one of the only ferns that she can nibble on. So I'm growing that. And I'm growing chickweed in there. She can have chickweed in moderation. I've mainly just potted some seeds so I can get them germinated in here and move them outside because the ducks will eat them as well. So in her actual run, we've got her hide. That's deep enough for her to hide in. She won't be able to be seen. And we've got, this is the coolest thing. I like this. Um, I found this in a garden center yesterday and this is a natural slate stepping stone. So it's completely natural. It's all just carved out of or broken out of a lump of slate and it's almost perfectly flat which is cool for a couple of reasons. It means for me, I can stand on this when working on this enclosure. So I don't have to walk in all the dirt. Uh, and also that's gonna aid with helping feed her as well and keeping her beak um, nice and uh, sort of trimmed down. So that's, that's a cool thing about that. So I'm not gonna be using a commercial food bowl for her. I am gonna just be feeding her on the slate. This is just some, um, some other big lumps of slate. Uh, just acts as a bit of interest for her. It kind of breaks up the whole area. Uh, she can kind of climb up and she can go down. I've got some serpivivums planted either side. They can eat serpivivums in moderation. I believe they have a laxative effect if they go too mad on them. I've planted them in there. They're not going to last. Uh, we might get a week out of them before she decides she's just going to eat everything in her path straight out of hibernation. But I've just put them in there for now. And they're also scattered in here are some seeds. I've found that anything inside these things in these runs, if they aren't protected, if the bases aren't protected, the tortoises are just going to nibble down on them. And they're going to destroy anything in there. But to be honest, seeds are a couple of quid. If they grow and she eats them, they've done their job. Uh, outside's going to be slightly different. I'm going to protect the plants a little bit more. But in here for now, this is kind of her setup. Um, so I'm going to feed her on there. She can have her daily veg on there. Um, I didn't mean daily veg. I mean uh, her weeds and all those kind of things for her. Uh, and then she's got a little bit of grazing, a, little, a few little options there. And every now and again, I can break off a bit of this and and chuck that in there as well for her. So that's kind of the rundown of her tortoise run. Um, in terms of the construction of it, 
So I'm using scaffold boards along the along the side. They'll be just tall enough for her to not get over. The all the way around the edge is varnished with a polyurethane varnish, so that stops the dirt any moisture from the dirt seeping into the the wood and destroying it especially over here where that is the base for this enclosure but also i don't really want these scaffold boards i'd like to get a couple of years out of this this run um, and then the base itself is 18 millimeter plywood that i have used on some of the other enclosure builds it's just some offcuts i've pieced it all together all the gaps are silicon they're all joined together and again varnished so that is the construction of her run. Now we've got to get her out and we're going to hang her heat lamp. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can hibernate tortoises in the UK. And I'm no expert. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert on this. We've kept Daisy for three years. We've hibernated her. This would be our third hibernation. The first time we hibernated her, we didn't use the fridge method. The next two times we did use the fridge method, including this year so I'm going to talk about the fridge method because I think that is the best way in my opinion um, I've worked at sanctuaries and zoos or an aquarium where we had tortoises so I'm no stranger to tortoises um, but take what I say with a bit of pinch of salt and I'm going to try and explain the best I can as to how I've approached her hibernation so this is Daisy's fridge I'm going to open it we can see up there she is in there. What is going on in here is uh, the fridge is set to stay around the five degree mark. The easiest way to kind of stabilize that temperature is obviously have the fridge running for a while before the tortoise goes in the fridge. And then also I use big bottles of water and they help stabilize the temperature. Once they're, once they're to temperature, they're gonna stop the fluctuations as much. Um, actually what she's in is topsoil again it wasn't soaking wet when we uh when we put her in it was it was fairly dry uh not dusty but fairly dry i keep a humidity ugh, humidity gauge over there so i can constantly monitor the humidity as you can see she's on about 75 percent we've got a permanent uh thermometer in there which is reading out well, we got 4.6 at the moment so the fridge has probably just started to cool down um there you go it's climbing up a bit and then what i do every every week every couple of days i also use my infrared um thermometer gun and i just zap her and she's pretty much constantly at five degrees which is spot on uh any colder than uh any colder than two degrees we're going to start affecting their eyesight any colder than freezing or one degree, we're going to start affecting their neurological stuff. So we can give them, we could kill them. Um, we could certainly uh, do a lot of damage to their uh, to their brain and other things like that. So, and anything higher than five degrees, um, nope, I lie. Anything higher than 10 degrees, we're going to start to bring the tortoise round from hibernation. So if the fridge isn't cold enough, it's going to also do damage, as much damage as <laughs> being too cold, um, because her organs will start to uh, kick back into life and she'll start to, she, she won't be hibernating, essentially. So she'll just be stuck at 10 degrees and that is not good. Uh, also with that, every week I take her out, uh, I put this on the floor, I put her on there and I measure her weight. Every week, I write her weight down. I've missed a couple of weeks, and there's a few fluctuations. I'm going to blame that on my scales not being amazing, and I'm going to blame that on the floor as well um, that I measure her on. So, But as you can see, with the fridge method, we don't want her to lose more than 1% of her body weight every week. So I measure her on the first week that I put her in, in December, um, and I write that down just so I can like you know just just so it's there but that um that means that every time i measure her i want to just make sure that she isn't losing more than 23 grams up there which as you can see she hasn't at all uh she really hasn't she's really stable and in my mind that is a sign of a good tortoise um a healthy tortoise oh 
like that. So as you can see, I've written there week 10. I've missed a week there because I forgot. And then it was a couple of days later and that's just gonna, yeah, I might as well just miss it. Being as I know, I'm, I'm fairly confident that she's doing absolutely great. So we are on now. Uh, that was last week. We're on week 14. They can stay up to 18 weeks in the fridge. So depending on if you're going to put your tortoise straight outside or you're going to put them in a run, you can time you can time it and you can work it out to suit your needs as well as the tortoise's needs as well. If a young tortoise, you wouldn't put them in for as long, but she is pushing 20 years old. So she's a fairly mature tortoise, so I'm not worried going for that extra time. Could go up to 18 weeks, but I like I like to just do it a couple of weeks earlier than that. And then because we're in the reptile shed, she can have all her UVB, she can have her feed, and she can just be up and up and about, ready to catch some sun when uh, when the weather picks up a bit. Okay, so we're gonna get her out now. Um, it's sort of midday, so she's got the whole day to get back up to temperature, uh, and then uh, she'll probably have a little bit of an afternoon being under the heat lamp, and then she'll be sleeping. And then tomorrow she's got a full day of it so we're just gonna we're gonna have to monitor what she does we want her ideally to be eating within a few days a week tops anything longer than that we need to talk to the vet get her looked at as i said we've done it three times now well we've done the fridge method twice and we've done a natural hibernation outside um and that was um and that was successful as well Slightly more panicking because if you have sunnier days, whatever you're keeping them in, especially where we live, we lived, we had her on a um, like a balcony upstairs. She had a big rooftop garden, but the minute the sun hit that, it was it was hot. It was a, so she's just up, and and that that was that was pan that made me panic quite a lot. So the fridge method for me is accurate. It's reliable. I know she's in there. I know she's going to be okay. I open the door every day, make sure she's got air, I measure her, uh, and she's been absolutely fine. So I'm going to get her out, oh. and what we're going to do, just going to give her a very quick, a very quick check over. We're going to make sure we've got no lumps, we've got no fungus, anything like that that's grown on her. She looks to be fairly good. She's a little bit dry, so she's definitely going to have to... I mean, she's going to get bathed anyway. So she'll have a good wash. We'll get, get her shell all nice and cleaned up, and we can make sure everything's good there. But, um, yeah, so making sure we've got no lumps, we've got no damage to her, no, no fungus. Her eyes are already open. Um, and what we're going to do is in... So we're going to slowly warm her up. We're not going to put her straight under the heat lamp. I'm going to put her back in this box... I'm then gonna leave that box for up to an hour to bring it back up to room temperature. So I'm gonna put a little lid on this as well so it will slowly bring up the temperature and um, and then we'll put her in a run next to her next to her heat lamp, not completely underneath her heat lamp, because I don't wanna hit her with you know 32 degrees uh, Celsius straight away because that's not gonna be any good. So and then when she's a little bit more up to temperature, we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're going to give her a bath, and then we're going to make sure we keep bathing her. Um, so we want her to make we want to make sure she's nice and hydrated. We want her skin to be good. We want her actually to be physically hydrated inside as well. So as you can see, she's doing good. So I'm going to put her back in here. I'm going to put her over in a corner where I'm not going to disturb her too much, and I'm going to let her naturally warm up to the room temperature of the shed. Okay, so she's over there. I put a little bit of plywood over the top. We'll let her naturally warm up for an hour. And in the meantime, I'm going to fit her heat lamp. Okay, so since the last clip, I have fitted a socket up there. Still need to put the uh, the timer on that, but for now, that's that's okay. So we've got a socket that's spurred off of the uh, the ring main on there. And then we've got a heat lamp and we've got Daisy. So what I've done since since the last clip, um, to me, to me it's a, it's more important to make sure she's nice and healthy. So that's what I've been concentrating my efforts on. 
But um, while I was fitting the heat lamp, she was she was warming up uh, to room temperature. Uh, the heat lamp was fitted. Um, I put her near the heat lamp to get her started, to get her active. Once she showed a little bit of movement, I moved her into the bath. She had a warm bath for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, so that, that's all done. Um, she's perked up. She's shown some interest. She's eaten some food. Uh, and now she's just kind of warming up so the rule of thumb for these d3 lamps is no less than 30 centimeters from the bulb to the shell which is what we're aiming for here um, i'm actually going to upgrade this lamp from a 100 watt which is what i used last year with no problems at all um, i'm going to up that to a 160 this year 27 on the floor 33 at the top so I'm not even looking at the bloody thing am I look at that so yeah um, so that's yeah that's what we're gonna do that means I can just have a better temperature gradient and we can just play about with the with the adjustments on the heat as well so um, the good thing is about uh, the way I've hung it from the ceiling, that, it is messy, but it's on a cable tie as you can see. I can lower that, raise that, and move it around if I want as well, so the options are endless. So we're going to leave her, leave her light on for a little bit longer, then we can let her have a sleep, and then tomorrow morning we'll get her up, we'll offer her some more food. As I said, she did eat, so she's had a successful hibernation. Um, and she's she's absolutely fine. So we're gonna um, we're gonna yeah wake her up tomorrow morning and offer her some food. Maybe give her another bath. See if she drinks as well. And uh, yeah, that is Daisy, everybody. Another successful hibernation, and you will be seeing a lot more of her in the future as we build her outdoor enclosure, which is going to feature loads of cool stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll catch you in the next video.